hello and welcome to another viewer reddit. Today I'm gonna take this photo from Ursus Mekong Longboat and I'm gonna turn it into a photo like this while of course explaining everything I do from start to finish. Alright, so we're here in Lightroom and first thing I want to mention, this is unfortunately a JPEG file which means we don't have as much dynamic range and as much possibilities as with a RAW file, but just for the kind of overall look, it is not a very big difference from JPEG to a RAW file. You know, all of the effects will roughly be the same and will roughly look the same, whether it be a RAW or a JPEG file, and you're definitely going to be able to use all of the techniques uh, with your raw files as well and there are a lot of different looks so first thing I'm just gonna show you very roughly um, the first look that I was kind of going for was a very vibrant maybe a little bit of a coolish uh, look like this you know something like that and then the second would be just kind of a black and white look and the third would be to go for pretty much the opposite and go very very low vibrant, make everything really dark and very moody, bring down the clarity maybe, so we get the very kind of washed out and dramatic kind of look. But at the end, you know, it's very difficult to choose because all of these looks look really good in my opinion, but I think I'm gonna go for the relatively vibrant and the relatively alive look because I found that one for my life to look the best. So then let's quickly reset that stuff right here and get started so I can show you really every step I do. And first thing I'm gonna do here is definitely raise the shadows. Gives a lot of detail to work with. And then I'm gonna also bring down the highlights so we once again have even more detail to work with. So then contrast, I definitely think that I'm gonna add some contrast and maybe even bring up the black so uh, we don't lose too much of the shadow detail but we really get sort of a punch and a pop and some life into this picture. Then the next thing I'm gonna do is bring up the whites while holding down the old key that is very important so you make sure you don't clip anything everything that is black is not clipped and as soon as you see a portion to get any other color than black that means that this portion is complete white and that there is no detail whatsoever in it. So generally speaking you just want to make sure that you stick uh, before any clipping. So I think that looks pretty good before or any whites added and after definitely makes everything even more vibrant and really gives some life into the picture. Then clarity. Clarity is always a difficult thing because there are so many different possibilities to go minus, to go plus, but in this particular case I think I'm just gonna add a little bit of plus clarity for the global picture and then grab a graduated filter and just drag it over the background with a very soft edge and go into minus clarity so we really get a nice sense of differentiation from foreground to background and you know that way we kind of create the effect of haze and mist in the distance which works really well since we have such uh, far down clouds in this forest right here so then let's go on back to the basics adjustments the global adjustments and I think I'm definitely gonna add some vibrant for this photo, um, vibrance and saturation, you could play around with both of these sliders, but generally speaking, vibrance adds color a little bit more naturally looking and a little bit more subtle. So I'm just gonna add a bit here, and I think that already works pretty well from before to after. Definitely looks a lot more alive, but there is one big problem that I don't like, and what is kind of the reason why I even thought about going black and white and that is this very brownish color of the water and in the foreground here. So it's gonna be pretty much impossible to kind of get rid of that at least in Lightroom. You could grab an adjustment brush and kind of try to paint over that and in fact it actually does work. Yeah, as long as I don't do it too far in the background. Yeah, hmm, that's interesting. I really didn't expect that to work, 
but here before that adjustment brush and here's after really just gives a little bit more pleasing color back to the water and probably should do that in these water portions in the foreground as well. The thing that I wanted to do is just bring the color temperature a little bit into the blues to get rid of some of that vibrance and some of that attention in this dirt and I think I'm still gonna do that because it also works kind of for the background just as a general starting place to work with um, but I'm not gonna go quite as far anymore so because I brought down the color temperature though and even without it I think these um, these roofs of these ships are a little bit too blue I'm now gonna grab another adjustment brush and just add a little bit the warmth just roughly over this foreground and over these roofs in the photo. I'll make sure that I don't forget these portions in the background. But yeah, I think that works pretty well for now. So let's go down to the tonal curve and here what I th think that I'd really like to do is bring up the highlights and that way you really create a lot of dynamic and a lot of interest in your picture but you just don't want to take it too far. And then the rest with these sliders, there's really no set tactic that I go for. Just play around with it and stick at the end with whatever you like best. And I think that works pretty well. And lastly, point curve. Here you could adjust the very fine and very texture contrast in your photo. And I mean, it's worth to play around with, but at the end, I think it's just a little bit too much, so I'm just gonna leave it at linear. So here's before the tonal curve adjustment and here's after. Really not a big difference in this particular photo. Sometimes it's more, sometimes it's less. But neither the less, I still think it's a little bit better looking. Then HSL tool, I'm actually gonna try to grab this little pin pointer in the saturation and go over the dirt and just bring that one down. I don't wanna take it too far though because it affects a bunch of other areas in the picture but that way we get even less attention to this boring and not really pleasant dirt. Then split toning. Now split toning is more a thing that I use in sunsets and rice pictures and since this is not really a colorful picture at all I'm really not sure if it will work but I'm gonna try it out regardlessly and just check out all of the different color hues and see if there's anything I like. I kind of like the orange color in the distance, but of course because this dirt is also pretty much orange, it will also amplify that and that is definitely not what I want. So I think instead I'm gonna grab another graduated filter and really just drag it over the very far background here and go a little bit into the color and just add some orange right there. So let me fine tune that and I think that works actually pretty well from before to after. It definitely gives some more warmth in some of these trees and maybe some interest in the lighting as well but uh, for the overall picture it doesn't really do that much which is a good thing in this case. And detail tool, I'm not gonna change anything there since this is just about the overall look but I have a very detailed tutorial about sharpening noise reduction and color noise reduction link in the description but I'm going to go over the lens corrections which don't really have any impact on the overall look either down to the effects and here I really think I'm gonna add some vignetting and vignetting really is a great tool it can sometimes work sometimes doesn't but oftentimes it really helps to give more attention to the center and it just works for the overall kind of look so I'm gonna add some actually quite a bit here and I think that looks pretty good before any vignetting it gives a little bit more attention to the center then lastly what we would have here is camera calibration and you know in, in a JPEG file there's not really that much that you can do and it doesn't really have that big of an impact anyways uh, so I'm just gonna leave that out and if you just want to see what it does for yourself just play around with it to yourself you know there's really nothing I could tell you it's very very different than with every single picture so it's kind of like the tonal curve really no set tactic 
But I think I'm pretty much done with the global adjustments here. And the next thing I'm gonna do is definitely grab a graduated filter and first of all, just drag one over the very bottom of this photo and go into the minus exposure. And that is a thing that oftentimes can help to close out your picture and to kind of contain the viewer's attention within the frame. It sometimes doesn't, but in this case, I really think it does work. And I'm gonna do the same thing for this guy, just bring down the exposure a little bit. I think I'm just gonna go back to this uh, adjustment brush once again and just make sure that I fine-tune some of these areas a little bit more because I definitely forgot to add some blues and yeah that looks a lot better but then I'm going to add some dodge and burning for sure and you know I'm still not sure if I like the black and white or the color version better Hmm. Actually, before I add any dodge and burning, I'm sorry for being a little bit hesitant here, uh, but there's really a thing that I kind of forgot, and that is to grab a graduated filter first and drag it over the part where the light is coming from, and just adding a little bit of plus exposure, and then adding another graduated filter in pretty much parallel, and bringing it down into the negative exposure right here. So that way you really get even more a sense of dynamic and differentiation in terms of lighting on your picture. So then another thing that I'm actually gonna do before that jump burning is to grab even another graduated filter over the very background this time and just go into the minus clarity so we get even more a sense of differentiation and a sense of depth in the entire picture. But then I'm really gonna add some dodge and burning and dodge and burning is just making individual parts darker or brighter. Uh, you could do this with the adjustment brush as well but I really just love the radial filter for that. So I'm gonna start off with some plus exposure and maybe gonna mix that with a little bit of orange in the color and a little bit of contrast as well. And the reason you wanna add touch and burning is really just to complexify the lighting to add some additional interest. For example, here I think this tree line could use a little bit more plus exposure. So I'm just gonna add some right here. Right click duplicate and maybe not as strong one over these bolts right here and get rid of the color and just add a little bit of additional lighting, some additional interest and then just right click duplicate. pretty much it. So here is before any dodge and burning and here's after. You really see, especially the negative exposure filters in this case, add a lot of additional contrast and a lot of additional dynamic. So I think I'm pretty much done with this picture. I'm really not sure, you know, at the end I might like black and white even better. Of course, I've added a little bit of color in some portions here, so I would have to get rid of these if I really wanted the black and white look. But overall, huh. I mean, black and white definitely has a very unique kind of look to it, and it really makes everything look a lot more old, vintage, and very simplistic because there's, of course, no color in the photo. I mean, it's very difficult. At the end, I think I'm just gonna stick with color, but I might have to bring down the overall exposure. That's just a thing that is a little bit too much. And yeah, I think that works even better. Let's go here into the history and see where we started at with the unedited version of this photo. And I mean, you know, it's a very strong difference from before to after. I think in any case, I like this a lot more. Maybe I just went a little bit too far with this blue here in the river, didn't I? Yeah, 
that might even look a bit better at the end. But anyways, I think, you know, I like the picture a lot more. I think it really gives a lot more dynamic and a lot more interest to it. And at the end, whether you like one of my looks or you want to go for a completely different look that I haven't even thought about, I still think you can do a lot of with this picture with some editing. And yeah, at the end, I think it looks pretty good. So I'm gonna stop repeating myself and I want to thank you once again very much Ursus for submitting your picture and thank you all of course very much for watching, be sure to subscribe if you haven't done so already and I'm gonna see you in the next episode, until then of course as always, take care.